Hello, people. I'm Jabby Kuei. This is Achara Kirk. Hey! We're going to talk about the movie Upgrade, directed and written by Lee Wannell. I think that's how you say his name. We're doing this a little bit different with three cameras and, you know, two microphones. We're trying a little podcast style of doing this. Uh, I thought it might be fun and a little bit more chill, even though setting it up was quite a headache. <laughs> yep, so. considerably not chill. So uh, we're going to talk about Upgrade, and uh, I want to give you guys the IMDb real quick. Set in the near future, technology controls nearly all aspects of life, but when Gray, a self-identified technophobe, has his world turned upside down, his only hope for revenge is an experimental computer chip implant called STEM. Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys haven't watched the movie already, uh, I gave this movie a four out of five. At least that's what I'm going to give it when I go on Stardust and uh, talk about it. So if you haven't watched it, I would strongly recommend you watch this movie. I liked it a lot. I think that it is bringing a whole new set of ideas and possibilities to film in what it was going for. I like stylistically, you know, what it was doing and, and just concepts. Um, but this is going to be a spoiler review. So I would stop this video and go watch the film and come back because yes. I just like I don't want to be limited in what we're discussing. So uh, that's my those are my two cents in a, in a nutshell, though. Go watch the film, please. If you like action, what are you doing here? If you yeah. haven't seen it already, yeah. go. I mean, it's got some in my opinion, some revolutionary fight scenes. Yeah. So let's jump into this. In the middle of the movie, not to start out with anything negative, but in the in the middle of the movie, I turned to you at one point and I said, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about the acting, but I really love the concepts yes. here. I love the I love what it's doing in general. I love the style of it. But like the main actor was just overly expressive sometimes. I thought he was good, especially physically, like he was good. Yeah. But there were moments where it's the small stuff that he had a hard time with, I felt like. I didn't really notice that. You didn't notice that first scene when he walks in and uh, when his wife comes home? and Okay, that was just a strange scene, though. That, but that's, that, to me, spoke to just the, <laughs> the weird acting that he pulled off in this film. Like, there's a scene in the hospital, for instance. Um, let me see if I can pull up the cast oh, list here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, know, I know exactly so which one we, you're talking about. Aaron, that's Aaron, right. Okay. So that scene in the hospital with Aaron... Uh, visiting Gray, both of them. There was just something weird there. Like Aaron is just so far out there yeah. that he feels like a character in a movie as opposed to a person. A person, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. Which is fine. It's fine. I mean, he can be a weird character, like something out of Harry Potter. Fine, whatever. Um, but then when Gray, Gray, Gray should at least be our grounded character. He's a technophobe. He should be the one we can most relate to because he's the most real. But when when uh, Aaron comes to visit him and he looks at him, he's got this, <laughs> like this big face. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Just just look, just look at him and, that, and let us project onto you like uh, Ryan Gosling. Like, just don't do anything. Just, just look at him and that will be adequate. Like, obviously you've gone through some shit. <laughs> like, you don't need to do much for us to project onto you what you might be feeling at seeing this little fucker, right? You know what I mean? Like, it was, yeah. just, it was, it was just a lot. And that happened a number of times. Okay, for instance, the first fight scene uh, where he uh, he rips that guy's mouth open, right? Yeah. Um, so cool, yet so awful at the same time. There was some moment, I forget where it was, where, oh, it's the first time he, he, he's, uh, he hears the guy's voice. Uh, Stem's voice. It's Stem's voice, right. And Stem says something to him, and he's got this look on his face. And everybody laughed because it was funny. Yeah. And then he follows up with, I'm losing my mind. I'm like, why are you saying that? Obviously, we see it here. You didn't have to s just shut the fuck up, please. Look, but that's not really an acting choice. That's like, that's script. He could have delivered it differently. He could have he could have toned that way down unless that's what the director wanted, which is f whatever. Like I, I would be think a choice I disagreed with. Like he could have easily been like I'm losing my mind. Like just toned it way down. Like it made it real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like uh, I don't know if you realize this, but the movie wasn't really real. You, you then you completely miss what I prefaced this with. Like he's supposed to be the character that grounds us. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He's supposed to be, like, obviously it's a film. Obviously it's fiction. Obviously these things are not reality Well, yet. yeah, because it's, like, but, quite science-y. Right. It's quite science fiction-y, I mean. But the performances can still be real. Uh, at least okay. his. His at the very least. His performance can still be grounded and real. Uh, and I felt like that's the biggest thing that was lacking for me was his performance. But outside of that, I thought this film was, like, phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. Um, the one thing that you 
didn't mention, and I don't really know if this is a grievance or if it's just an observation, but for me, I feel like I can tell exactly what's going to happen beat for beat for beat. The mm-hmm. only thing that really, really surprised me that it was that it was stem all along at the very end. Like, okay. I, I, I had already figured it out all the way down to Aaron from the moment that they went to Aaron's house. Okay. Like, I already had an inkling that he was the one that caused the accident, that he yeah. had this... It, plan or whatever and i was like it feels kind of predictable to me but saying that though i still had a fantastic time it was really fun i was thoroughly entertained and i was kind of like i really don't care yeah (laughs) that i know what's gonna happen let me address the predictability for you so there's two things at play here number one you watch a lot of movies way more now than you ever have in your entire life true number two is every story has been told right yes it's a classic story uh, uh, unless you are telling a nonlinear story, mm-hmm. and this is linear. Uh, unless you're telling a nonlinear story, you will be able to see things coming. And you, as you, you know, anyone who's read a lot, watched a lot of movies, you will be able to see things coming because it's just following the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell's That's hero's journey. True. Like it's really just that at a, in a heart. In a and nutshell. I think I'm one of those annoying people, and I know like anyone who uh, follows us on the Jabby Koe channel will know that when you're watching a web series with me, I'm, I'm the annoying person who's like, well, this is going to happen next. Yeah. And that's just kind of like, that's, I guess that's part of my viewing experience is I like to Sherlock Holmes it and I'm more like, mm-hmm. let me just put all these pieces together. But no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I think it's really, really unique. Can we talk about the fight scene? Well, what I wanted to talk about next, first off, was the violence. Okay. Um, and the reason why I want to talk about the violence is because I thought that while the violence was extreme, yes, I thought that it was very carefully handled because yeah. it didn't happen every five seconds. It mm-hmm. wasn't a gory movie. There were gory moments, but yes. it's not a gory movie. And I actually really appreciated that because if you compare this to something like The Raid, um, which everybody loves, they love, I mean, anyone who likes martial arts movies loves The Raid and Raid too. I know you haven't watched it, no. but um, you should just because, you know, you, you're a part-time cinephile. So. Um, <laughs> part-time. You, you need to watch The Raid 1 and 2. If you haven't already, you guys should watch that. Uh, they're not my favorite movies, but I still say watch them. Now, that being said, the raid, especially raid two, has violence like all the time in that movie. Mm-hmm. It's a lot, and for me, uh, if you have you know that much violence in the first twenty minutes, th- the rest of the movie kind of becomes boring because yeah. now I'm desensitized. But if you hit me with it unexpectedly every now and then, it sh- it like you you felt the energy in the entire theater because yeah. like it was it was so abrupt, especially that first one and when it goes to the guys. And the face. thing is, you saw that in the trailer. Yeah. And you still, when it happened, I was like, yeah. and then, and then again, um, at the end, when a uh, dude's head gets impaled on the piece of glass. All of that was gross. I, I had to look away. Yeah. I, I had to look away while it was happening. And then I like kind of turned back and was like, oh, that's what happened. Yeah. And I put two and two together because I just, I just couldn't watch. Yeah. I, I thought the violence uh, was strategically placed. Yes. Very well done. Because I'm yeah. not a huge fan of just like tons of gratuitous violence because i am very squeamish but mm. i i didn't mind it yeah. this time around um so the fight scenes then yeah um so for me being someone who's grown up watching fight scenes studying fight mm-hmm. scenes and, and has created his own fight scenes a number of times i thought that this was very well executed you just, you know looking at the director you wouldn't think that he'd be the kind of guy who's directing a martial like lee Wynnell. like you wouldn't assume that he'd be doing this kind of movie especially coming from saw like i would not have expected this and i just thought it was so well done because you could see what was happening and there was two things happening at the same time also was like the main actor gray is the character his face is like doing something else yeah like what is happening while his body is like fighting this dude and i thought that to be able to separate the two have the face of this person have the body of this person. Yeah. I thought that was brilliant. It was that was very good. There were certain moments in the movie where I felt like I had that same feeling that I had when I was young and went to watch The Matrix for the first time. Yeah. Just the way they shot some of those things, like moving the camera yeah. with the the punches and stuff. I was like that's amazing. I told Lee <laughs> at the after party afterwards, I was like, 
I think people are going to be copying what you did for years to come. Yeah. I, I truly believe that. Like, it's really different. Well, it certainly has a style of its own. Yeah. I, I really did like that a lot. I mean, he did a number of things here that I wish I had done. Like, mm -hmm. the when Gray does a backflip, the camera flips with him. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, I've always wanted to do something like that. Damn it, he did it first. Um, and it's not like I couldn't try to do it. That's what makes me even more angry is I could have tried to do that. I could have tried to shoot that and I just never haven't yet. And now he went and did it first. I'm jealous. Um, but like, yeah, he, there was I think that it was a robotic arm. I've seen I, I think oh, that because yeah. I've seen a, a number of demonstrations with this thing where Marky e. Brownlee talks about it, where it's all like mapped out uh -huh, uh, and uh -huh. you, you can control it with like an Xbox controller or map it out on, on a thing and just program it and go, OK, go do the thing now. And so on action, they press the button. The actor does his thing. He must have had cables pulling him up. Um, but that it was perfectly synchronous. I was yeah, like, beautiful. Only a robot, I think, could get that kind of precision mm. it was beautiful uh I, I did like that a lot the way the camera was working with the fight scenes instead of against it which yeah. is what we most often see um I, which is really baffling to me why they did the last fight scene the way they did dramatically like everything was effective in that movie like yeah. stem was like i can't i don't know how to keep up with this dude's moves like he's predicting all of the things i'm doing which was just you know, that was a beautiful moment. So he had to go psychological on him to beat him. Yeah, yeah. I know you said you didn't love Logan Marshall Green's acting style for some of it. But I have to say that his acting for the fight scenes yeah. was so spot on. And even his physicality, like that very nuanced change in physicality from when he was just regular gray to gray with stem in his neck. Mm -hmm. The way he sat was even like robotic and the way he moved it felt it wasn't like a major change but it was like very slight and i really appreciated that little detail like it made me happy i think i think that his name's logan he, logan yeah. yeah he he definitely i give him a lot of kudos for pulling off a physical performance a strong yes, physical performance. very strong physical performance uh, it's just the expressions that bother me like and, and that's first scene with his wife was just awful like it felt yeah. like two actors showed up to set that day and met each other for the first time and did this scene. Like it didn't feel lived in. It didn't feel yeah. like even like it everything was too cute. Everything happening in that moment. I'm like, you guys have been together how long? Did you just like start dating? Because yeah. it doesn't feel like you've been married for a while. It feels it doesn't feel lived in is the best way I can phrase yeah. it. Um, but yeah, physically, his acting was great. I thought that the only thing I wish there was, which is a nitpick. Uh, it's stupid, but I wanted a scene where he's walking with his arms stiff and, uh -huh. and someone calls attention to it. And then he, he looks at it and he's like, I, I, hey, stem. And then he does the thing, you know, and he right. moves his arms like he he has to relearn all of these things. I thought that would have been, yeah, you know, but maybe. I mean, that's nothing that needed to be in the movie. That's just a dumb thing that I would have liked. Another thing that I really appreciated about it was like the little the little pockets of humor. Yeah, I thought it thought that was very nice. You know, it was like, oh, my God, the stakes are so high. And then here's a bit of humor plus a bit of violence. Mm -hmm. Like it just you're like, ha, why am I laughing? This guy's getting his face mutilated. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, because it's, it's just so shocking. It is. Yeah. It is. And I, I thought that and after they got the hacker to do the code on him and rebooted him with like no safety measures at all. Yeah. That was scary. Yeah. And suddenly like. Now I don't need your permission to take control of your body. So, ha! Right. You know what it felt like to me was almost like a relationship between Hero and Baymax. Evil Baymax. Evil Baymax. Well, I mean, <laughs> eventually. Yeah. Right? But he did kind of have that, like, very pleasant uh, AI voice, like right. Baymax. Like, are you satisfied with your service? <laughs> I, I know that. <laughs> you... I, I know that part of the point of the film is to let us know that this is a bad thing. Like these, the the, the the film is making a statement, which is if we have this technology, it won't help us. It's going to work against us. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't help but spot all the positive reasons for this technology. I like okay. For instance, when he goes, "Let me take over," and then he beats up the bad guys. I'm like, I. Okay, there was a moment that followed where where the, where the Baymax or where, where Stem goes. You, you have to clean this up now and, you, and clean your fingerprints. 
I, w- I almost wanted a moment where the, where Gray goes. No, you do it. Can you take over and like <laughs> clean this up really fast? Yeah. Like I would love it to to have someone else take over the operation for a hot second to make my bed, to cook the food, to do the exercise, <laughs> like all these things that I really don't feel like doing. Like it just just turn on the autopilot and it does it for me. You know, like that would have been just. I don't know. That's so funny that that's what you felt because afterwards I was like, oh, a self driving car. How about no thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah how about i don't want that stuff how about i'm gonna be a technophobe like gray <laughs> yeah it was a very solid script uh it was great visual effects yes the great set design awesome fight scenes except for the last one the performances were fine except like the main guy sometimes just kind of upset me i don't know what he was his deal was but um, but there were other moments that he did that were good yeah like it was just like if he just i don't know if he just did less Throughout the movie, I think it would have been a lot better of a performance. But, like, there were good moments that he had, nevertheless. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't know if that's an actor choice or a director choice or a combination of both. So I think that he certainly will be, he he will get better. As, yeah, as he's he, one to watch, definitely. Yeah. And he looks a lot like Tom Hardy. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, I would agree with that. Yeah, in fact, I, I, I think that's one of the things we said in the, when we watched the trailer was that it could have been a Tom Hardy movie. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that he's fine and he he just needs to like work on doing less but overall he's a solid actor Mm -hmm. anyway yeah i like this one a lot i gave it four out of five uh, i'm giving it four out of five stars Uh, i think i gave it four and a half on stardust if i could give it four and a half i would i didn't know you could do four and a half no no i mean i gave it a five but i qualified it with like a little text in there that went four and a half okay yeah well that's because like i I feel like it's it's a little bit more than a four but because of like minor things it's not quite a five for me. I will give it 4.75 stars. How about that? All right. So <laughs> um, anyways, you guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments below if you had a chance to watch Upgrade. Uh, I really, really, really like this movie a lot, and I plan to buy it on Blu-ray. Yeah. I thought that it was just... Stunning. It was a stunning film, and they did a lot of things in here that you hadn't seen before, and I really appreciate that about it. I like the world building they did as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Um, yeah, just I love it. I, I, I like this movie so much. Do let us know your thoughts. Uh, please check out Achara Kirk on the social media and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out other reactions, reviews, and short films. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.